Let's start. That's the idea. Okay. Oh, they're Hello. ready for us now. Yeah, we are ready. <laughs> we can start. <laughs> So wonderful to have you here. Thank uh, you Duvier. very much. Nice to be here. Um, and I'd like to ask you a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Um, so um, one of your first um, couple, one of your first bands was La Paz. Yes. You played in, and um, can you tell me a little bit what was the genesis of of, of that uh, of that band, um, and whether you have any c upcoming uh, concert plans? Mm -hmm. La Paz was La Paz was the first band, and what you did then was you played with the best players mm -hmm. in your locale, right? Mm -hmm. So Chick McSherry was the best guitar player there. Uh, clearly, I was the best singer, <laughs> obviously. Okay. Um, and, and and we just got to, we just got together, and and I brought a friend of mine called uh, Alec Carmichael, and Al, big Al came and joined. He was in the bass, and we found a we found a very young keyboard player called Andy Mason, he was 17. And uh, we ended up with Paul McManus playing drums for us. Now Paul is a member of Gun, the band Gun, okay. Scottish band uh, Gun. And, 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 and we, we played around for four years. And, um, and then I've been to all of their weddings. You know, <laughs> it, it, we're still, because mm -hmm. I think that bonding you get mm -hmm when you're traveling around in a mm -hmm. transit van, mm -hmm. sitting there, you ju that's, it doesn't matter how big the band is, how famous the band is, it doesn't matter. You'll never get that feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like your first love, you know? <laughs> and, and, and it was great. Um, mm -hmm. And we got back together and did a couple of albums and, and all the money we did, all the money we made from the, from the gigs and from the albums, went to uh, support football teams, children's okay. football teams okay. in Mexico oh, because Chick mm -hmm. has uh, business mm -hmm. out there and he was appalled at the, you know, they had to be drug runners <laughs> or, mm -hmm. or, or, or prostitutes or whatever. And so what we did was we managed to get some money together and put, mm -hmm. if the kids went to school they could join the football team. So we bought them football strips and we got them balls and shoes oh, that's and things. Lovely. And that's what we did. And, and we're still friends. I spoke to Chick this morning. Okay, yeah. wonderful. It's uh, it's already um, a third or fourth time uh, you're you're in Poland uh, and you're a special guest uh, for the memorial of John Lord. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this idea of the of the memorial um, as such? I think Luke, mm -hmm. we did it we did I did it once before with Lucas and he's and he's he's such a lovely lad and he's very passionate about mm -hmm. what he does and he loves loves the work of John, as mm -hmm. do I, mm -hmm. and um, so when he called me up and asked me to do it, I just, I had no hesitation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no hesitation at all, mm -hmm. and we rehearsed last night for about six hours okay. uh, with everybody, just doing it, um, and tonight it'll be, it'll be, it'll be just be a glorious celebration of the work that John did. And we've got some mm -hmm. great players, the band are terrific, you know, uh, and, and so we're just looking forward to going out there and having the best time we can possibly have tonight. And people will love it. Okay, wonderful. Um, what is your most recent uh, musical uh, project? Uh, what are your basic, uh, basically what are your plans well, for I the a, upcoming I, months? Well, I've just finished, I've just finished a tour with a band called Alcatraz. Mm -hmm. Now, I played with Ingvi Malmsteen for, for many years back in the early 2000s and I've been friends with Graham Bonnet who was also in Alcatraz but Graham decided, him and I had a conversation in, in Edinburgh just before the pandemic okay. and he said he did not want to do this kind of music anymore, mm -hmm. that he hated being in Alcatraz, he didn't like the music mm -hmm. And I said, and I just said to him, I said, look, you're 72 years old, man. Why don't you just, mm -hmm. you're not as old as Tony Carey, obviously, but, <laughs> do, but just go and do the kind okay. of music that mm -hmm. you want mm -hmm. to do. He quit the band. 
Mm -hmm. He just left. Mm -hmm. So they phoned me up and said, look, you told them to leave. So now I'm, now I'm, 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 I'm just finishing off. Before I came here mm -hmm. uh, to Warsaw, I, did, I was doing backing vocals for what will be my second album mm -hmm. with Alcatraz. And so I've been doing that and, uh, and we'll be touring with that next year. Okay. Festivals, cruises, mm -hmm. all, all the good things. Okay, Europe, but also outside Europe? Um, um, well, that depends, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. it'll, most, it'll mostly be Europe. We just did a month through Europe about, we finished about six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and we did, we did 18 gigs okay. in 21 days. Yeah. Okay, that's in ten pretty countries. intensive. In ten mm -hmm. countries, you know, so I might sound a wee bit rusty. <laughs> okay. Um, Dougie, you, you sang uh, in these um, legendary uh, heavy metal bands uh, like Tank and Prying Mantis and um, there were also the Iron Maiden musicians like uh, Cliff Bird, Danny Stratton, Paul uh, Diano. Um, how do you remember these bands? How do you recall these, these times? Well, I got, I got kind of I landed in Praying Mantis for a Japanese tour and that was all. Um, and while I was flying over to Japan, and at that time you had to fly, it took 17 hours okay. because you couldn't fly through Russian airspace, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> or Soviet airspace, so you had to mm -hmm. fly over. And I was still learning songs mm -hmm. on the plane because the singer pulled out for whatever reason, mm -hmm. so I was still learning. Um, we didn't get on very well, mm -hmm. the Praying Mantis lads and I. Um, mm -hmm. But but we've sub subsequently we got on okay now. Okay. But I mean it's a long it's a long long time ago, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know and I don't know Diano at all. I met him once, mm -hmm. but I don't I don't know him at all. Um, you know, so it's it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It was the same mm -hmm. with Tank. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of got involved with Tank because their singer couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I seem to mm -hmm. be I seem to be a replacement for singers who can't do it. <laughs> Or who decide not to be? Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. Uh -huh. Well, let's get Doogie in. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know. So uh -huh. I did two. I did two albums with Tank. I did half an album with Praying Mantis. Mm -hmm. Many, many years later, because they had a guy called John Sloman. Now okay. John Sloman is one of my favourite singers, mm -hmm. and he just pulled out. So they phoned me up mm -hmm. and asked me if I would do finish the mm -hmm. album. So I did. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard it. I don't have a copy of it. Mm -hmm. I know nothing about it. <laughs> Okay. Um, what do you think about uh, Blackmore's night music? I don't like it. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite Deep Purple's album? Oh, Made in Japan. Okay. Made in Japan. Oh, uh, N Rock's brilliant. Um, a Fireball, I really like. There's no. And I really like Burn, but you're asking for my favourite. Mm -hmm. I liked Made in Japan, mm -hmm. and, and I can tell you why, because I just think the energy, it was the same with, mm -hmm. uh, with Rainbow on stage, mm -hmm. there's an energy that comes from live performances that you don't get from studio performances. Mm -hmm. if, you listen mm -hmm. to, if you listen to the first uh, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow album, mm -hmm. it's all very slow. Mm -hmm. bum, 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 dum, mm -hmm. You, when it hits on on stage, mm -hmm. it's, it's magic, a story. and mm -hmm. it's the same with Machine Head. Everybody, mm -hmm. everybody loves Machine Head, mm -hmm. but I love Made in Japan because mm -hmm. the songs just have a fire mm -hmm. and, a, and, an, and an energy that you don't get from mm -hmm. sitting in a studio. Studios, yeah. okay, okay. Do you think, like after 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 the years, that um, working with such musicians as Lord Dio, Blackmore, they, did they have? Do you really think they had influence on your artistic and uh, musical of course. career? I mean, you know, when I used I used to go to church, mm -hmm. right? And, and and every Saturday we had a youth fellowship, mm -hmm. and the, and and you have these little ante rooms off to the side, so the main church is here, these little ante rooms, 
and the girls would be in one room listening to <laughs> Donny Osmond and David Cassidy. Mm -hmm. And I would be over here mm -hmm. with the two Kenny Johnsons, mm -hmm. and I would bring in my David Bowie album, uh, and, and Big Kenny would bring in Genesis, and it was never a prog guy, mm -hmm. I never liked it. Mm -hmm. And we Kenny would bring in Deep Purple mm -hmm. and Black Sabbath, mm -hmm. and that just changed my, my entire world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I steal from people, but I steal from really good people, uh, you know, from, from, from Coverdale and from Glenn Hughes and from Ronnie and from all these guys. And it just becomes a blend mm -hmm. that, that becomes mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and I love that. So they were all massive, massive influences on me because, mm -hmm. I mean, it, there was no point in me trying to, to learn Judas Priest songs or Rush songs because mm -hmm. I didn't have that mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. not have that range or that timber. Um, and, and so I just went naturally to Ronnie and to David and to Glenn and to mm -hmm. Ian Gillen, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, just m how Richie managed mm -hmm. to pick all these brilliant singers and get, and, you know, and Joel and Turner and Graham, <laughs> Graham Bonnet, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the list just goes on, mm -hmm. you know, and then unfortunately mm -hmm. he got me. All of my life I've had a sin and reputation I've been the bad cheap of the family Could you tell me a little bit about your cooperation with uh, Ingvi Marstein and Michael Schenker Group? Well, I, jo I joined Ingvi, um, and, and I knew what I was what I was getting into mm -hmm. when I was when I worked with him. He said, "I'm going to write mm -hmm. all the songs, mm -hmm. and you will sing what I tell you to do." <laughs> right, okay. And, and I stayed with him for seven years. We uh -huh. had seven very happy years together, Ingvi and I. Mm -hmm. um, and then he wanted to change, mm -hmm. and so he got he got Ripper in, uh, Tim Owens, mm -hmm. uh, formerly of Judas Priest, uh, and then a mate of mine, Chris Glenn, was the bass player with uh, Michael, and Michael mm -hmm. was looking for a new singer, and, mm -hmm. he, and he and I went and sang one song with him, and he mm -hmm. went, "Would you like to join my uh -huh. band?" And I said, "Yes, I would. Mm -hmm. Thank you very mm -hmm. much." So mm -hmm. I was with Michael for nine or ten years. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as with all these magical guitar players, mm -hmm. they they need to evolve, mm -hmm. and that normally means mm -hmm. firing the band <laughs> or the singer. You mm -hmm. know, so that's what happened. So, mm -hmm. so I was let go again. Mm -hmm. But he's been in touch. Michael's been in touch in the last eight months, saying that we should really get back together and do something. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. I made an album with uh, with the Rainbow uh, with Richard Blacksmore. Uh, it was called Stranger in a Soul. Yeah. And um, could you could you tell a little bit about the uh, the cooperation um, uh, with Richie, but and as a whole in the band? Well, it was again. It was I. I had nothing to do. I was I was so unemployed, and. Um, mm -hmm. I, had a, I couldn't afford the ticket to go and see Deep Purple mm -hmm. when Joel and Turner was a singer in the band. Mm -hmm. But a friend of mine worked for the record company and I said to him, mm -hmm. can you help me out? <laughs> and he got me a ticket mm -hmm. for the gig, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he said, look, uh, as a wee bonus for you, I'll, I'll get you a party pass mm -hmm. for the after show party. Mm -hmm. And he said, don't get drunk <laughs> and don't make an arse of yourself. I went, okay. okay. And, uh, that worked out. That worked out quite well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so I made up a tape, mm -hmm. right? And put mm -hmm. my name and mm -hmm. my phone number on it. Mm -hmm. And I met Colin Hart, who was the tour manager. And I, I knew Colin just because I'd seen his picture on um, an album sleeve. Mm -hmm. And I said, if Richie ever needs a singer. And I handed him uh -huh. the tape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. three years later, I, I was about to join a German band, mm -hmm. and the phone went, and it was, hi, this is Richie Blackmore. I'm like, really? And within 10 days, okay. I was in America. Mm -hmm. He liked the fact that I could jam. Mm -hmm. He liked the fact that I could sing okay. Mm -hmm. And he liked the fact that I knew every single song he had mm -hmm. ever done. And we just, and we just worked together mm -hmm. until one day he decided, 
he didn't like me anymore. And it was in the blink of an eye, like that. I don't like you anymore. Mm. That was it. Okay. But happy days. Okay. <laughs> okay. Look and I spent more, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, with, with Envy mm -hmm. and with Michael mm -hmm. and with all the other guys, I mm -hmm. spent more time with Richie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we took three months, four months to do the album and we were together every mm -hmm. single day. Mm -hmm. And we used to go to, it was only him and I left at the end and we used to go to, uh, was it Blockbusters? The video yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. We used to yeah. go and get yeah. videos and sit and watch videos. Okay. Hilarious. Okay. It was great times. It was great, great times. times. Yeah. Wonderful. I haven't spoken to him for 30 years, right? Enough. Right. And, um, Duki, what are you looking forward to tonight? I mean, what are your expectations? What are your thoughts before tonight's concert? Well, I know we've got a good band. Mm -hmm. And I know that we have, a, have great songs. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to go out there, give my best performance, mm -hmm enjoy the performances of everybody else who's there mm. doing it. I mean, the band mm -hmm. are really good, mm -hmm. really good. Um, and and I, I'm just looking to see the joy and the happiness mm -hmm. on the faces of people mm -hmm. when we're playing these songs that maybe they haven't heard for a very, mm -hmm. very long, long time. time. Yeah. A yeah. very, yeah. very long yeah. time. And it'll be a celebration uh, of John's work. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do some Pace Ashton Lord stuff, but we couldn't get mm -hmm. it together because that's mm -hmm. very... It's not straight rock and roll, it's, a bit, it's more complicated. But if we ever do it again, we'll be doing uh, I'm Gonna Stop Drinking Someday. <laughs> right? How's that working out? <laughs> and, uh, so, um, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do that. So, uh, uh, Lucas has put together a mm -hmm. great band. Mm -hmm. He's got a great venue and he's got Tony Carey. What could, what could possibly go, go wrong? wrong? Exactly. So I wish you a wonderful concert, a wonderful very much. atmosphere, and thank you very much for this interview and for your time. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much, people. Thank Lovely you. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Thank you.